But this time tomorrow, we will know Gareth Southgate's latest England squad, Mr Danny Murphy. Of course, uh, the game's coming up there next Friday, the 23rd, England take on Italy. And then they're at home the following Monday on the 26th when England play Germany. I mean, Danny, when you look at these things, uh, what do these final two matches before the World Cup, <laughs> incredible as that sounds actually, what do they need to be about for Southgate? Um... Well, primarily, some positive performances on the pitch always help confidence. Um, getting everyone together, I mean, his core, getting the core together so he can make sure that they're all on the same page and, and playing well and physically fine and all those things. But ge generally, when you go away with England, what you want is people playing well. Mm. I mean, it's it, decent opposition, isn't it? It is decent opposition. I, I don't expect too many surprises. I think what the squad will give you is an indication of anyone on the periphery who we might be thinking of, because you'd have to put them in now to have a look. People like Tony, Madison, that yeah. type. Yeah, we're going to get to that. So I think, I think that will show us a lot. I think if you're not in this one, you're not going. Well... Oh, no, sorry, I... I I was, talking, well, I was going to take you up in that. I'm talking about the players on the periphery. I'm not talking about his main stalwarts who he's who he's had for a long time. Some of right. them might not be in so it. So in that category... Henderson's injured, for example. Sure. I mean, Simon, do you, do you regard Marcus Rashford, and we've spoken about Rashford before, as one of his stalwarts? Do you think tomorrow could be last chance saloon for Marcus Rashford if he wasn't to make the squad? Yeah, I would think so. I think the biggest thing they've got to pick up, pick, He'll be pick, in it. Pick up the slack from that shambles passing as a team that competed during the summer um, when they got beat 4-0 by the Hungarians at home. Mm. Obviously, we all defended those results by saying they weren't good enough, but also these are not telltale examples of what they're going to be like when they play in September. And that's when you need to, to determine whether Southgate start co copping some real flag. Um, I, Marcus Rashford is making the more compelling argument he's made for some time to be in the international setup. If you take his body of work over the last six months, he shouldn't be anywhere near it. If you take it over the last probably three weeks, then you start to find a different answer and a diff to a different question. Um, I, I think that um, I'm in the camp with with Danny that people aren't that aren't selected in this group will probably find themselves in a very invidious position as far as getting selected for the World Cup. But I do think there are some people that push their way back into it. You answer the question: Will Maguire be selected? Because Maguire hasn't started. A, we started a game the other day, didn't he? In the um, yes. in the uh, uh, the Europa, Europa League or whatever league United are playing in Matthew and Twitter saying better life Maguire will be in it well he's, this is the balance isn't it we, 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 do we quit, do we criticise somebody for showing something that's very rare in sport which is loyalty and belief in somebody or do we suggest that they should be true to their words which they only pick people based upon form um, and a, a sustained form not a historic one um, and a current form so with that in mind Maguire finds himself in a very difficult position but he probably won't Rashford is again an argument that that will rage for me. I'm not I'm not a Rashford admirer. I think he's okay. I think he's all right. I think you have to be pretty decent to play for Man United. But there's a difference between that and being a world beater that he's portrayed as being. People portray him as a world beater. I don't well. Well, they do. They make up this the idea that somehow Marcus Rashford is the cure Who's for all else. Well, segments of the media, other football pundits, people that have observed upon Marcus Rashford. You know, that have I like. About I his think level he's a terrific of, player, but I, I've never had him as a world beater. But he's, he's, a, me he's a bloody good player. Would you have him in your squad tomorrow? Yeah. Would you, Simon? Um. Possibly. There's not many of our forward players who are firing. Grealish isn't playing much. Um. Who else? Mount isn't hitting the heights he did last season in terms of his goals and assists. I love Mount, by the way, and he'd be in my squad. But you know what I'm saying? He hasn't Sterling. scored. Pardon? Sterling. Sterling's doing all right. Scored a few goals. Yeah, he's, he's certainty. I mean, he's he's one of his majors, isn't he? He's one of his main players. But I think if you look at form at the moment, Rashford's in. Yeah, yeah. D does reputation trump form at a time like this? It's a balance because Rashford's got history with Southgate. He knows him personally. He knows his footballing... He's trained with him many, many. You know, he's had him in the squads for years, so he's got he's got an advantage. He knows what he's getting. He's got an advantage at Rashford ahead of others who haven't been in as many squads. Because, okay, because so he, does a newcomer get a chance? Would Ivan Tony get a chance? There's. It's suggested he'll make it. Well, yeah, I think that's my point. If you're going to bring someone in to see how they might adapt and see how they might cope in the training and the getting the, on the international, now is the time. So I'd give him a go. You know what you're going to get with the others. 
He knows he's tried all the others. He's seen all the others. So although Tammy might be ahead of him, why not start Tony? Because he knows he's seen Tammy play lots of international games. Why not? Madison's another one. I'd give him a go again. I'd be excited to see Tony make the squad time with the possibility well. of getting to Qatar. I would as well. Because that's the sort of thing that gets fans going, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's certainly, if you're picking players based upon form, then Ivan Tony is a, is, a, is a player that should be very much in the consideration. I'd like to see him in the squad. I'd like to see him begin opportunities because I think there's a, f- a freshness about him and honesty about him. I think, put all that to one side, the quality of his play this season has been extremely high in terms of his goal scoring, the, the, the overall play... Well, he's so unorthodox as well. Well, I, I see. I, I mean, that's what they said when he came out of the championship. I don't see him as an orthodox. I think he's just a very good centre forward. What's unorthodox about him? Well, the, he's got a good touch, scores good goals, can head a ball. He's a centre forward. Well, you, you don't see many centre forwards whipping free kicks in top corners, and you also don't. So see why is that unorthodox? That's just a good player. An orthodox is a way of deriding something. Well, I was going to go on to the unorthodox bit in terms of the way he carries himself, the way he runs his body, his posture. He's not somebody who's aesthetically pleasing on the eye with the way some players look elegant. He doesn't. He's quite awkward in the Does way... Does he need to? It's effective. No, he? Don't. I'm just saying that when you watch players... Berbatov's the best example of someone who's elegant. On the, he looks good on the eye. Ivan Tony's physical disposition, the way he runs, the way he puts himself about the pitch, isn't that easy on the eye, but damn effective. That's mm. the unorthodox bit I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, so, so people's posture and the way they run and the way they I jump... Do, and the do way... you look at it that way, Jim? I mean, I, I look at the centre. I don't think how, how he's Kane's, raw, raw, he's, how Kane's the most elegant of players at times I when he's covering he the grass. He, he, yeah, I mean, he's a better player by Kane's, a country Kane's mile. Kane's elegant. Kane, yeah, okay. Kane's got well, lovely well, touch you know, and awareness. I'm, I'm talking about. But I'm looking at Ivan Tony and thinking, I don't think he's galloping around like bloody Andy Carroll. I think, he's, I think he's a centre forward. I think he's not, a strong physical presence. I don't. I, I don't you're making it. Say, you're making it as a criticism. I'm not criticising. The nature of saying he's unorthodox is. I don't understand what the thinking is behind that because it's not a compliment. There's nothing about that that feels like a compliment. He's a really good centre forward. Well, and, quite and unique is probably a better way, maybe. Yeah, it's quite That's unique. Way, Danny. I mean, he, he's a battering ram. Well, I mean, Peter Crouch, was, has Peter Crouch was unique, unorthodox, whichever you want to use. There's a difference in the word. And granted, if yeah. you put it in the dictionary and we could analyse the. But your example that you gave was how many centre forwards can you see that can hit a free kick in the top corner of the net? Now, mm. I would say that wasn't unorthodox. It's got nothing to do with unorthodox. I would say that's to do with quality, and it's nice to see. Yeah, that's a talent. And a but, great head over the ball and a great worker off the ball. I think he embodies everything you want in the centre forwards. Yeah. No, I, I've just said I want him in. I, I'd love to see him. Have, have, have Calvin Phillips' chances reduced somewhat since he's gone to City? Yes. He hasn't started. I don't think he's started a game. I, mean, I, might, it, I might be wrong with that. I mean, he might have started one. It's almost ironic, isn't it? That he gets his big money move, he's in the limelight, and yet seems to take a step out of the international scene. Well... It, Unfortunately, he, he's not been that fit to play in a lot of the games. No. Um, and he's is he injured. a fitness thing, do you think? No. I think at the moment, City's midfield is just... He must have known this. ...purring. Well, you'd think he'd have a conversation with the manager about where his chances may because come. Because he's made a big move. But let, let's not forget, the there's a lot of four tournaments start. You know, He, did, he is going to get games. I don't think he's not going to play between now and the World Cup. But he hasn't played many minutes. So it is a dilemma for Gareth because... Does he just stick with what he knows and keep him in and give him minutes at international level? Or does he say, well, I've got to think of a plan B without him? Because the midfield, the central midfield area for England, we are not, we haven't got an abundance of talent. Bellingham's the superstar on the rise. Yeah. A lot of people want to see him in the team. I mean, when it comes to it, it's only eight weeks now for, from the business end of things. So it, it doesn't have much time, Phillips, no. to either prove or no. not prove he's going to make it. Where do you stand on Trent Alexander-Arnold? Nobody better to ask than, than yourself, Danny. Uh, does he get there? Does he get there on merit? I don't think he goes. Has he got the defensive qualities no. that England well, will need? Ga- I don't think Gareth will pick him. Uh, would I pick him? Yes. You would. Yes, because he's the only right back. Wearing your Liverpool hat? No, no. I mean this genuinely. He's the only right back. If I, I mean, in terms of the quality of right backs we've got, everyone will have different choices. We are blessed with them. The thing that Trent gives you that none of the others do, and even if you don't start him. He can do things from an attacking point of view that the others can't. He sees passes they don't see. And he cross he can cross the ball better than any of them. Now, I'm not suggesting Tripp and Reese James aren't good crossers of the ball. But Trent is a, is a creative player. But what about don't... defensive solidity? Well, that's why he wouldn't start. Wouldn't start or wouldn't go? That's why he won't go. He won't go? I don't think he'll go, no. I would have him. I don't think Gareth will choose him. I think if Trippi has fit the way he's playing, he's been outstanding. I have to say, absolutely outstanding. Reese James and Kyle Walker, I, I think he's going to struggle. 
I don't think Trent goes. So he's well serviced in that area. And and that Well if you look if you look at the last No need for Trent. What was it? The sorry, the Euros. But you're saying he gives you something that the others don't give. I believe, yeah, from an attacking point of view. And I think in games where you're playing Iran... So that's he, why he should be going, no? Yeah, yeah. I but he won't so. go. I don't then he, he gives you something that others don't give, which is a Rick. Well, Kyle so Walker you, can make a Rick, but that's not... Yeah, yeah, but not to... So you're saying that we pick a defender because of his attacking qualities. And that's fine when we're playing against opposition that's weaker than us. Which we do most of the time. But we, when, we get, when we're trying to win, so we'll get him in the group stages. You can play there, Trent, but just accept the fact that when it comes against the better teams, you're going to be benched. Well, isn't, isn't the point of a squad having diversity and having actually different players well, you I can thought do... The point, I mean, you tell me better than this. I thought the t- point of a squad and the point of a team was to build a winning team that had continuity attached to it, and the best teams have continuity. Yeah. Well, OK, let, let's simplify it. What, what, if you were only choosing two, and I think these days you'll probably choose three... Trippier and Reese Williams. Rhys James. Rhys James. Rhys James. Oh, I always call Rhys Williams because I used to work for <laughs> yeah, Wells sorry. called Rhys Williams. Um, yeah, and you'd not take Kyle Walker? Um, Probably the best defensive right back in the Premier League, defensive. Because um, if you're playing Germany, Leroy maybe, Sane's on Maybe, the left but wing. I wouldn't take Trent. Okay, but that, that's I, what, I that's what I'm Trent, saying though. Yeah. But we've all got these different opinions. I would like the option, because I think you can take three right backs, because he did it in the... With the amount you can have in the squad now, I think he'll take three. So do you think Trent will meet the squad tomorrow? Um... No. Because he's not going to go to Qatar? Probably. Okay. All right. Well, this time tomorrow we will know who makes it, who doesn't. Very keen to see if Ivan Tony makes it. Would love him to go. Good lad and a good player. My goodness. 12.15. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.